guys Joanna here with another time for tea designs video this set video was recorded on Thursday evening um, as part of our Facebook live and it was a really exciting one because um, we shared some sneak peeks of the brand new release so the products in tonight's um, or in today's video um, aren't available until Monday um, that's Monday the 27th of January 2020 um, so we're just going to show you some of these um, now so the first products that we showed as part of the video are these cute little notebooks so these are A6 notebooks all with gold foil um, script on the front um, in different uh, different quotes um, on the front there that are all relevant to us um, crafters so we've got all that glitters is hashtag goals which is one of my favorites and they've all got a dotty um, grid inside um, the second one is list of craft supplies I need to buy we've then got busy procrastinating which you can see there and then the final one um, is craft supplies before guys and on the back it has our website address but also a little sneak peek of a character that will be joining us really soon um, you also will be getting these um, these pencils as part of um, a little set so you'll get a pencil and a notebook um, and they all have those quotes on the uh, on the pencils there and they're in our brand colors so again in gold foiling and really really sweet really cute to just pop in your handbag if you're uh, needing to make a note of things or if you're going to a craft show and you want to make a note of all the things that you need to buy while you're there because um, I know I always have a big long list when I go to any of these events so here are the two new stamp sets that we're releasing on Monday um, so these sets will be um, available on create and craft as well on Monday so um, and we do have a show on Monday at three o'clock so we'd love it if you could join us um, and I'm just showing you here that uh, the different elements within the stamp set that all work together so you have a little stem there for all the little flower elements a little trampoline for your um, for your little rabbit to be um, bouncing up and down on um, and then the sentiments that go with that so I'm sorry it's a little bit low on the screen here um, but we were filming live and I didn't realize um, that was a little bit low down um, but it's got a little worm some mushrooms um, a butterfly uh, the hip hop hooray sentiment so hop, hoppy you're my friend um, and then the little the little boing um, marks <laughs> to help you show some movement when you're creating your project the second stamp set is our fairy garden so again i'm sorry it's a little bit low down on the on the screen there um our little fairies come with some little accessories the the wand the butterfly the present and the little cupcake there is um some really cute sentiments the fairy happy birthday and thank you very much i love you very much um, and a little swirl that you can add to your butterfly or to your wand and then the exclamation mark that's got a little heart on there so I did have one of the images colored up but again it's just gone off the bottom of the screen there so I'm really sorry about that uh, but there will be more videos using the fairy garden um, stamp set coming up this weekend so look out for those um, but we're going to focus on our hop hip hop hooray um, stamp set with our little bunnies um, and uh, this um, I had coloured up some of the elements for this one just to show you what they look like fully coloured because I think that does make um, a huge difference um, so you can see what those sets look like. So I started the card by stamping out my images so I'm using my um, my stamping platform um, and I'm just going to focus on one of the the bunny rabbit images for this um, particular card and a couple of accessories that I've chosen um, from uh, from the set to add to it um, I did add, add a couple of other accessories um, which you'll see at the end which I'd already got pre-stamped and I'd already fussy cut so I'm just stamping my image with some memento uh, tuxedo black ink onto some super smooth cardstock um, so just giving that a really good press down um, and uh, and there you can see we've got a really nice image so I'm using my Copic markers to color in my little bunny um, 
if the image does keep going in and out, I really apologise for that. We were having some problems with um, with connection to uh, Facebook um, at the time, so hopefully this uh, the um, quality of the video is is good enough for you to be able to see what we what we did on the on the night. So as I normally do, I am starting with my lighter shade of grey and working up through those shades to create some depth and dimension. So I'm assuming that the light is coming from the right hand side. Um, so the right side of my um, little rabbit will be lighter and then um, the left hand side is where I will add most of my shading and depth. Um, so wherever um, there will be um, any of the, the rabbit's body covering an arm or um, an arm casting shadow onto his his belly there um, and then the ears as well so just adding shade where those areas would be uh, the darkest um, I've added a little bit of pink to um, our little rabbit's cheeks and I've left his little uh, cotton tail white so moving on to the carrot now, um, I'm just using um, my YR14 and YR07 to just do some really quick and easy colouring um, for that. Um, and again, I'm sorry if we, we keep going in and out of focus here. I didn't want to not leave it in. Um, so uh, just so that you got an idea of what we did during the tutorial. Um, but this is some very easy and quick colouring. Um, nothing too complicated. The images are quite small. So I've just used two colours. Um, so two shades of red, R36 and R37. And then again, some warm uh, shades of grey to colour in the bottom of those, those mushrooms. I will go back in later and add some white um, jelly roll to my toadstools. Um, so that they uh, they look more like the traditional toadstool um, that you would see illustrated. Um, so now I'm just quickly um, fussy cutting my images. There are no die sets for these two um, stamp sets this time around. Um, there, there are a number of reasons why we didn't do that this time. Um, I know sometimes it, uh, it can be um, a little bit more expensive to buy dies, um, particularly at this time of year. I know we're all probably watching our our pennies um, but also um, from a manufacturer's point of view this was a really busy time of year um, and we felt that actually to do to make sure that we got um, a, a new release out to you um, straight after Christmas um, that to do it without the, the die sets this time would actually probably be much more beneficial we didn't want to keep you guys waiting another six weeks for a release um, when we could do one um, a little bit sooner without the dies. So just quickly cutting round these images. They're actually quite simple to cut round um, and I'm trying my best to move my um, image and my cardstock rather than my scissors so that I get a nice, um, a nice cut and I'm leaving a white, a small white border around each of those images um, as I believe that that really sets them off really nicely. And they look almost die cut, um, I think, if you do that. So we just pop those to one side and we're going to start working on our background now. So for the background, um, I'm going to um, ink blend onto one of our new card blanks. So I'm going straight onto the card blank. Um, this is um, a five inch square card base, um, although it is fully flat there um, in the on the screen that you can see there. Um, and I'm just looking at which of our uh, masking stencils I'm going to use and I decided in the end to go for the large circle um, masking stencil. So I'm going to use the grid lines, uh, the etched lines that are on there to help me make sure that I've got this lined up in the middle. So while they are made for, so the, the etch lines are actually more specifically for your A6 or your A2 cards if you're in the US. Um, they do still give you a little bit of guidance as to where um, the edge of your card should be um, and help you get that straightened up. So um, I popped my, my circle towards the top of my card as well just so that um, I've got room to add a sentiment underneath. So I'm just showing you here a little bit closer, those are etched lines. You can see there are two lines 
Um, and one of those is for a US A2 size card and the other a UK A6 card. Um, so it's really handy having those lines there to help you put everything in, in place and make sure that you've got things lined up correctly. So now I've got that in place, I'm just going to use a little bit of um, masking tape, some, some purple tape there, um, just to mask off the bottom. What that will do, will um, it will create um, a, more of a, a semicircle effect or a domed effect, um, but it will also give me a, a wider area to pop my sentiment underneath. So I'm just going in um, using one of my beautiful blender brushes um, and the Twisted Citron Distress Ink, Oxide Ink, wiping off my brush um, with my microfiber cloth. So I'm not changing my brush, I'm going to continue using the same brush, but I am going to go in with um, a different colour of green. So I'm going to use the Crushed Olive just to add a little bit more, um, a bit more depth to my colour. So just applying that liberally across the bottom and um, rubbing that, that through the stencil um, so that we get that really nice spring um, green colour, um, which is just really nice and fresh for, um, for spring cards, I think. Um, really in the mood for um, some spring and some bright, fun coloured cards at the moment because of all the the grey that we seem to be surrounded with um, weather-wise, certainly here in uh, in Sheffield in the UK. So Distress Oxide ink stay wet for quite a long time. So, um, and I'm going to be doing some um, embossing, some heat embossing. So I did just use my anti-static uh, pad over the top. Um, the, the ink was still so wet that it did colour my, uh, my little um, pad, my um, anti-static bag um, so it will do that it will stay wet for a little bit longer so we didn't get the crisp um, stamped impression um, that you would get if you just let that dry a little bit uh, longer so if I was doing this um, not doing this as a live um, event I would have given I would have either applied some heat to it so that it dried um, a little bit more before I applied my embossing ink but, um, or I would have let that dry naturally. But because we were under a time pressure, we went straight in there and I'm using some of the little accessory stamps to randomly stamp um, using that embossing ink across my background. Now what I would normally have done here and what I should have done was take my mask off before I applied my um, embossing powder. I, it didn't really matter too much as long as I obviously didn't apply heat to it with the, the um, stencil still on there um, but I was distracted by the conversation and I just went for it so but it still it, it still worked fine but you can see there that I've, I've added embossing powder where I didn't really need to um, so just pop that back into its container and now I'm going to remove my stencil so that I can um, set that powder with my heat uh, tool um, and what I did notice um, was that there were still a few specks um, on there and I'd also stamped one of my hearts over one of my little carrots because I couldn't really see uh, quite what I was doing. So I've missed out the, the heat setting part of this so because um, it, you couldn't really see it on screen. Um, so I have heat set those, those stamped images and so we've just created a little pattern in the background with, um, with those carrots and hearts. Um, so a bit like our very own patterned paper and now I'm uh, going to arrange where my sentiment should sit. I've decided to use the birthday die um, from our um, sentiment die collection um, and I'm going to use the hoppy sentiment from the stamp set itself. Um, so for the birthday uh, die. I'm going to use some of this beautiful glittery cardstock from Strawberry Moon. Um, so just cutting a piece of that um, that's the right size for my die and then just pop that through the die cutting machine. And while that's going through my snap machine, I'm going to stamp this uh, this sentiment, hoppy sentiment on the, underneath um, that, uh, that background that we've just created. So using my stamping platform again, just to help me get that lined up to make sure that that's as straight as, uh, as it can be. And then I'm just gonna check that I've got the positioning just right um, by adding that, uh, that die cut sentiment underneath so that I 
can see that there's enough room for everything to fit underneath and that does seem to work really nicely in terms of spacing. So once I'm happy with where that's positioned, um, I'll close the door of my stamping platform and I'm going to use some VersaFine Onyx Black ink um, because I think this gives a really nice bright stamped impression for my sentiments. And there we have our little hoppy stamped underneath. And now I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the paw of my rabbit because I want him holding that carrot. I want him presenting that carrot to whoever's birthday it is. Um, so I've just popped that in place. And then I'm also die cutting here um, some more of those birthday um, sentiments in just out of plain white cardstock. The reason that I'm doing that is that I want to create some dimension to my sentiment um, so I don't want it to just lay flat I want it to be a bit more 3D than that um, and by doing it um, with the cardstock it creates a really nice bit of depth um, and means that you don't have to try and apply um, lots of little foam dots or um, any silicone glue or anything like that in order to get that depth that you want. Um, the cardstock itself was very thick. I was using a 300 GSM and I would put it in the middle of my snap machine. So you'll see there I was just showing that it hadn't fully die cut. But if you move it to the side of your machine, there is more pressure there. So you're more likely to get um, a cut um, if you were to move it to the side. If you're struggling to get, get a cut, that's, uh, that's a good way to uh, correct that issue. Um, so I've just stuck the two... Um, to the white, two white pieces of card together there and I'm also doing a little bit of um, maneuvering to stick the little dot above the eye together so I get the same amount of dimension in that. So I've kept one piece in its um, in the die cut waist element if that makes sense so that I can keep it all together and then I've just added the other two dots on top of that. Um, again just adding a little bit more of the liquid glue and then finally adding that glittery sentiment right on top. Um, the liquid glue allows you to manoeuvre things around a little bit, make sure that you've got everything lined up um, and that just creates a really nice um, bit of depth. Um, it's almost like um, an, a, a more flexible MDF piece. Um, so uh, the other alternative actually, which I've not tried, but would be worth looking into um, is whether you can do that um, using some foam, um, some of the foam sheets that you can get and some of those are self-adhesive. Now that would be a really nice uh, thing to do to add a little bit of dimension and it's already got the adhesive on the back. So I've added some foam, um, foam dots to the back of my, um, my little rabbit there and popped him in the middle of my background and then I'm doing the same with those, those toadstools and for the the butterfly. For my little worm I've just added the foam dot to his head and then I'm using liquid glue to attach the bottom of his uh, his body so that um, his head is raised up but um, his uh, his bum isn't. Um, I just thought that that would make another little interesting little bit of dimension and then um, using some liquid glue to pop my sentiment, uh, my die cut sentiment underneath. Um, and I've just used my tweezers there to help me position that um, so that I don't um, misplace it and get any of my glue anywhere else. And then finally, I'm using a glue pen, um, which I've not used before, just to add my, uh, my little dots in place. So that's a Nouveau glue pen, and that did seem to work really, really well. It meant then that I wasn't, because it's such a small piece, um, I didn't want a big splodge of glue um, getting all over my uh, all over my project, so uh, that seemed to work much better. Finally, I'm adding those dots to my toadstools and um, some highlights to the carrot, to those cheeks, and to the nose and eyes, and um, and then just to because I wanted to add a little bit more. Um, a bit more shimmer and a bit more interest. Um, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of um, glossy accents to my toadstools. Um, my glossy accents wasn't playing ball 
um, it didn't really want to come out. Um, and what I have found is that, um, and I, I did kind of know this beforehand, that it does uh, wash out your, your white um, dots that you've done on your toadstool a little bit. But they are glossy now it's dried, which is a really nice, uh, a nice look. And then I've added some uh, stickles to my to the to the wings of my butterfly for some extra glitter and shimmer, um, and that's our card complete. I do hope that you've enjoyed our tutorial today. Um, this is the first of the sneak peeks for the weekend. We will be having a blog hop. Um, let's see what we did there um, tomorrow morning. Um, that's Saturday the twenty fifth. Um, and you will be able to see lots of inspiration from the design team who've been playing with both of the stamp sets. And by joining us for the hop, you can also be entered into a prize draw. All you need to do is comment on each stage of the hop um, and let us know what you think to the new stamp sets. Um, and you will have a chance of winning both of the stamp sets and a notebook and pencil set as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Please do look out for us on Create and Craft on Monday at three o'clock as well. We'd love to have you join us there. And obviously we'd love for you to join us during our Facebook Lives that happen every Thursday night. Um, so please do like and subscribe to our channel um, for more tutorials in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a really great day. Bye bye now. Mm -hmm.